over the past year home loan interest rates have moved from an attractive seven and a half percent to an unbearable nine and a half percent per annum now as a home loan borrower what are the options available to us can we prepay part of the loan can we somehow get a relief from this big burden that's what we're going to see in this episode but first up what is a home loan brief introduction given that in today's day and age friends that a cost of an apartment even a 2 bhk a decent one costs anywhere between 50 lakhs to 100 lakhs depending on the city place location so one needs to definitely take a home loan to fill the gap between what we have and what it costs and that's where home loans play a very very important part also these are very very long term loans so why should one consider home loans as an option first up these are fairly cheap they are among the cheapest loan that one can avail of for two reasons one is they have the security of a home and second is they get refinanced by the national housing finance so they are very very cheap the cheapest form of loans available in the market are home loans second they are also for very long tenure so home loans are typically for 10 years or 15 or 20 or even 25 years so they're very very long term so the interest and the repayment gets spread over a long period of time therefore the initial burden is much much lower for the borrower and third and not the least is that they also provide a certain amount of tax benefit to the borrower in terms of taxation so these are all the three reasons why most people find it convenient to go for a home loan now let's understand what is the implication of the interest rate when it has moved up in the last one year now assume that the interest rates have moved from a seven and a half rate percent floating rate per year to a nine and a half percent floating rate in a given year on a 75 lakh principal loan that one has borrowed the significance of this change over a 20 year period is that once emi moves from 60000 to almost 70000 a 10000 rupee jump almost a 15% plus rise in a month on month emi repayment schedule so that's the first one second is because of this rise in interest rate and this if you extrapolate it over the 20 years means that you would end up paying 22 lakhs of higher interest as compared to what you would have otherwise borne. This is a significantly large impact or a burden for somebody who is already burdened with paying their home loans. So this is where one needs to think about ways and means of how to reduce the impact of this higher now what are the sources one can find cash flow from the first and the easy source is to look for all monies that are lying around in various bank accounts like most of us keep a certain amount of money just lying around in various savings account or current account and so on and so forth so the idea is to find out how much of these monies we have and accumulate them in one place second we may have instruments that have already matured we may have fixed deposits we may have nsc accounts which have kind of already matured we may not have encashed it for the want of time this is really the time to go and make that cash those uh, investments so that you have a reasonable amount of money that you can use to set it off third source is that if you made investments some while ago and your portfolio let's say of equity mutual funds or shares have a reasonably good amount of profits this may not be a bad time to take out some amount of that profit and see if you can use it for the purpose of repayment this apart if you can find ways and means of generating there are some people who work in corporates or run businesses 
where they enjoy a bonus say on yearly bonus or performance incentive or a yearly profit if they're running their own business all of these can be some kind of a source which provides you capital to make sure that you go towards prepaying your uh, home loan closing is a long way off but i think even a, a prepayment of a certain order will help you derive the benefit now typically just to understand the impact of interest rates when you pay 100 rupees of an emi the emi component the equated monthly installment of that loan has an embedded component in the form of interest and repayment of principal now on a 20 year loan the way this is split is in the first few years even up to the 10th year you'd find that a predominant part of EMI that you're paying goes towards the interest amount due. Very, very small amount goes towards the principal. It's only after the 10th year that the significance of uh, prepayment happens on the EMI in the form of your uh, principal amount. To give you an example, the first year on every 100 rupees that you pay, only 15 rupees goes towards the principal amount. 85 rupees goes towards your interest and so on when you're in your 10th year 36 percent is towards your principal 64 percent towards your interest when you come to the 18th or the 19th year of a 20 year loan then it's reversed 85 percent of the money goes towards principal and only 15. why is this significant to understand is that in the initial 10 years of your loan you need to be a little bit more urgent about prepaying a certain amount because that's where the impact will be the most. If in the first 10 years, whatever little surplus you have, you're able to generate, if part of it is going towards your home loan repayment, it will give you great benefit as compared to doing it in the next 10 years. The later 10 years, the impact of prepayment on the loan interest will be very limited as compared to prepayment of the principal amount in the first 10 years. So that's why I just wanted to bring this aspect into play. Things to remember while you prepay your home loans. First up, don't be obsessed with closing your home loans. Home loans are typically long-term debt instruments. They are really, really large. So one should not be obsessed with trying to close it as early as possible. It's a good idea to prepay whenever you have some surplus money or use it judiciously, but obsession is always bad. So try and avoid the obsession to close it early. That's the first message. Second, do not pay your last penny in terms of prepayment. Now, in case you have an emergency fund, it may appear to you that the emergency fund is not yielding much returns. You may be tempted to take the money that's available in the emergency fund to close the home loan. Not a good idea. The funds that you have in excess of what you have kept for your emergency needs is what you need to use to prepay the home loan. Do not, do not use your emergency funds because if you did and if there is an emergency, you won't have a place to go. So that's the second one. Third. You may have made investments in mutual funds or stocks, maybe recently. So you may not have substantial profits on that portfolio, in which case you'll have to think about whether you want to disturb that portfolio, both the principal and the return. Why? While the interest rate is about 9.5% and we want to kind of reduce it or reduce the quantum of loan, a mutual funds long-term returns are anywhere between 12 and 15%. So if you can grin and bear the interest burden, uh, later on, these long-term equity instruments can give you a much higher return, which maybe you can use to close this as well. In conclusion, I would say it's a great idea in times like these to look at prepayment of any loan, including a housing loan, but one need not be obsessed about it. Given the fact that home loans are the cheapest varieties of loans, they are long-term in nature, and you get tax breaks, I don't think it's a bad instrument to stay with. Except that, 
if you can reduce the interest burden just a little bit, it makes a lot of sense.